All right, so we're going to continue on working through our modeling chemical reactions on page 103, uh, which is also following the steps on Black Line Master 3-5, or if you've been printing out class notes, uh, they're, they're also in those, those notes there. Pause the video now if you need to go and grab that so you can work along with me as we go through this. So we're starting on question 5C, and with 5C, uh, we are given our word equation. So we're given that copper 2 oxide reacts to produce copper and oxygen gas. So what I have as my reactant here, I've got copper 2 oxide. It is a compound. We've got the stock uh, system telling me that we've got a copper 2 plus ion, and I've got the oxide ion, which is the O2 negative ion. So when I go to write my skeleton equation, I want to make sure so that my balancing works that I write a neutral formula for that ionic compound. So I'm going to use my uh, crisscross and reduce this ratios and my copper 2 oxide will have one copper 2 plus ion and one oxide ion there. And because he's an ionic compound, we're not in a solution, he is a solid. Now he reacts and he produces copper, the element or a copper atom. So I've got one copper there plus oxygen gas. Now oxygen, when we have find him as an element, he is one of our diatomic elements. So that means he comes in pairs. So that's why I'm writing down that little subscript of two to show that he comes in pairs. Now with our diagrams, what we're going to do is we're going to use colors to represent each of the elements or each symbol there. Because sometimes it's easier to see that balancing when I've got uh, colors there to help identify and draw the eye a little better. So here I've got in my ionic compound, I've got one copper ion and one oxygen ion. So I'm going to use blue for copper. So I'm drawing my little blue circle to represent the copper ion. And I've got and red circle to represent oxygen. So there I've got a red circle, our blue circle and a red circle representing car copper to oxide. And on my react, so that's my reactant. On my product side, so the right side of that arrow, I've got a copper atom. And I've got an oxygen molecule. So uh, and our oxygen molecule has two of our little oxygens together. So that's what my skeleton reaction looks like as a diagram. Now I want to take a look at balancing and I'm going to use the colors to help me. So on my reactant side I've got a blue. On my product side I've got one blue. So right now copper is balanced. I take a look at oxygen. I've got one red circle on my reactant side. On my product side I've got two red circles. So oxygen is not balanced. So I need to balance my oxygen and the only way I can balance the oxygen is by adding another copper 2 oxide compound. So that means I need to add a blue circle paired up with a red circle to represent my copper 2 oxide. So I now have two red circles representing oxygen on the reactant side two red circles on the product side representing oxygen. So oxygen is balanced. But if I go and double check my copper, I can see right away I've got two blue circles for a copper on my reactant side, but on my product side I only have one. So that means I need to add another blue copper element atom by itself. Now in my diagram, I want to count how many of each did I add. So when I came to draw when it came to drawing my copper 2 oxide, I drew two of my copper 2 oxide um, ion, ion compounds. I drew two of my copper uh, atoms and I drew only one of my oxygen atom molecules. So when I write my balanced reaction, though the number that I drew is my coefficient. So I would have a coefficient of 2 in front of my copper 2 oxide solid. He reacts to produce. I've got two of my copper solid atoms plus 
I only have one of my oxygen gas molecule. And remember, we don't write the coefficient of oxygen of one uh, in our reactions. Just having the formula there tells us that we've got one. So let's take a look at our next example. Pause if you need to. So we've got six, or sorry, question 5D. And what we're given is we're given water is reacting to make hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. So we know water, his formula is H2O. He's a liquid, so that's why I'm putting the state L there. He reacts to make hydrogen gas. Again, hydrogen, he is one of those diatomic elements, so that's why he's got a subscript of two to show that he comes in pairs, plus our oxygen gas, who also comes in pairs. Now, in our diagram, I'm going to make hydrogen, blue, oxygen, I'm gonna represent with a red, and so in hydrogen, or in my water, I've got two hydrogens, so I'm gonna draw hydrogen circle, another hydrogen circle, and I'm gonna put the oxygen circle right in between them. So I've got one water. On my product side, I've got one hydrogen there, so I've got a hydrogen molecule, which is two hydrogens next to each other, and then I've got an oxygen molecule, which is two oxygens together. I'm gonna to take a look and look at balancing going to look at my blue hydrogens. I've got my reactant side. I've got two. On my product side, I've got two. So my hydrogen is balanced. If I take a look at oxygen, I've got one red oxygen on my reactant side. I've got two on the product side. I need to balance my oxygen, and the only way I can balance that oxygen is by adding another water molecule. So I'm gonna add another water molecule to my diagram. So I'm gonna add another water. So that's two hydrogens with an oxygen. I go and I look, I now have my oxygen is balanced. I've got two on my reactant side, two red circles on my product side, oxygen is balanced. I now have four hydrogens on my reactant side, but I only have two on my product side. So that means I'm going to have to add in another hydrogen. And now when I double check, hydrogen, I've got four blue circles on the reactant side. I've got four hydrogens on the product side. So I have my hydrogen balance. I look at my red oxygen. I've got two on the reactant side. I've got two on the product side. So it's now balanced. So now, I'm gonna write my balanced equation with my coefficients. And when I look at my diagrams, I drew two water diagrams. I drew two hydrogens diagrams and I drew one oxygen diagrams. So the coefficient that I put in front of my water on my balanced equation is gonna be two. So I've got two water molecules reacts to make two hydrogen molecules plus one oxygen molecule. And again, we don't put the coefficient of one, just having the formula there tells us that we have one.